Sinus problems are a common and troublesome issue for many people. The sinuses can become inflamed as a consequence of any common cold and the symptoms may resolve quickly. Unfortunately, in some people, they can become more severe and prolonged and can be a source of discomfort over months to years. The symptoms of sinus problems may include breathing problems through the nose, a runny nose, a drip down the back of the nose, also known as a postnasal drip, a loss or reduction in the sense of smell, facial pains or headaches, or sometimes a chronic cough. Chronic rhinosinusitis is an inflammatory condition of the nose and sinuses lasting three or more months. It's really an umbrella term for a range of clinical conditions that eventually present with similar symptoms. The diagnosis is considered when two of the following are present. Nasal obstruction or a blocked nose, a runny nose or drip down the back of the nose, facial pain or headaches, or a loss or reduction in the sense of smell. Chronic rhinosinusitis has a large number of possible causes, and more than one factor may be present in an individual. Anatomical problems include a deviated septum, enlarged turbinates, or extra sinus air cells. Allergic rhinitis or hay fever can be an issue. A chronic bacterial or even a fungal infection can be the cause. Uh, in some people, it's their immune system. Nasal polyps or systemic diseases can also rarely be factors. The first step is to visit your GP and discuss the problems you have been having. If things reach the point where your GP cannot completely cure your sinus problems, they may then refer you to an ENT specialist. Your GP can organise a blood test or skin prick testing to look for allergic rhinitis. Generally, skin prick testing is more accurate than a blood test. A CT scan is the next step. Your GP can prescribe a range of treatments that may be helpful. These include nasal steroid sprays, oral antibiotics, often given over a three month period, antihistamine tablets and sprays, nasal saline sprays and rinses, and occasionally oral corticosteroid medications like prednisone. The next step is to ask for a referral to an ear, nose and throat specialist. An ENT specialist will begin by going over the history of your sinus symptoms and trying to organise them to diagnose possible contributing factors. They will use a tiny telescope to then look at the lining of your nose and sinuses. The ENT specialist may then go on to organise additional blood tests and probably a CT scan of your sinuses. Occasionally an MRI will be ordered as well. Some sinus problems can be treated with medicines. Other problems require surgery. Surgery is generally avoided if the problem can be treated with medicines. Specific problems that are treated with surgery include a deviated nasal septum, narrow sinus openings, additional drainage pathways and air cells, enlarged inferior turbinates or nasal polyps. Occasionally nasal polyps can also be treated medically. Sinus surgery is generally very safe, but like all surgery, there are risks that need to be considered. Safety has improved considerably in recent years with the advent of high definition cameras, endoscopes and image guidance. We look forward to seeing you at North Shore Private Hospital.